Welcome to Civil Services Achievers Point. We are discussing today the Assam Tribune of 15th and 16th October. This Assam Tribune analysis is based on the new pattern of APSC. This is also useful for the other state level government examinations. At Civil Services Achievers Point, we have various courses. For details, you can call at the number given below. These are the answers to the MCQs of the 14 October current affairs and these are the MCQs of 16 October 2020 you can pause the video here and you can attempt the answers to these MCQs in the comment section below these are the important newspaper articles and the important editorials we are discussing today so students let us first begin with the news articles the first news article is regarding the uh, e election held in the United Nations Human Rights Council. So there has been few members, they have been re-elected and there has been some criticism of the body which we will discuss in our editorial today. So this topic we are discussing in the General Studies 2 paper topic International Relations. So the background is that Nepal has been re-elected as a member of the United Nations Human Rights Council in the elections which were held at the United Nations headquarters in New York. So currently serving as a member of the council since January 2018, Nepal has been re-elected with 150 votes on Tuesday and will serve as a consecutive three-year term of 2021 to 2023. Nepal's foreign ministry has said this and three countries from Asia Pacific region that is China, Pakistan and Uzbekistan have been elected and they are among the 15 member states which have been elected by a secret ballot in the meeting in the plenary meeting of the 75th session of the United Nations GA. GA means General Assembly. So United Nations General Assembly 75th session of a secret ballot hote these 15 countries have been selected and among them from Asia Pacific the countries are China, Pakistan and Uzbekistan and Nepal. So this is important news because APSC might check this point in the upcoming prelims examination. Then the next topic comes is the wholesale price index that is the WPI. Uh, WPI rises to 1.32%. Now, this is we discussing this topic in the General Studies 3 paper Economic Development. So, in this article, we are discussing regarding the rise of the prices, food prices. So, high prices of food products, primary articles, and manufactured goods. This accelerated the India's wholesale inflation. So, consequently, the annual rate of inflation based on the wholesale prices rose to 1.32% from 0.16% in August and from the 0.25% in July. So, this is again important. So, WPI it will be released bi monthly, so every month. So, the numbers are also important, but which in the comment section you can mention which organization releases the WPI. That is important for us in our prelims examination. Then the next topic, Cabinet okays the STAR project. So this we are studying under the General Studies 2 paper, Governance and Social Justice. The Union Cabinet chaired by Prime Minister Narendra Modi approved the STARS project. Now under a new education policy to support states in strengthening the school education system. So, APSC may ask what is the meaning of the STARS project or what is the full form of STARS. So, the answer is strengthening teaching learning and results for states project. So, this is the STARS project. The government has started the implementing the NAP 2020 and as part of the process, it has approved the STAR project. The World Bank supported project is estimated to cost Rs 5,718 crore and the project aims to support the states in developing 
and improving school education outcomes. So this project is for developing and improving the school education outcomes. Now coming to the next important article, Great Barrier Reef has lost more than half of its corals in past three decades. Means in the last 30 years, coral reefs have been damaged very much and this is his, this has been found by repeated researches. So the Great Barrier Reef, so APSC may ask this question that along which coast this uh, Great Barrier Reef existing? So the answer will be along the Australia. So Great Barrier Reef in Australia, which is the largest reef system in the world. So it is again very important since it is frequently in news. So the Great Barrier Reef, which is located in Australia and which is the largest reef system in the world has lost more than half of its coral population in the past three decades itself. So the due to the research, it is found, this is a research which has been found. So during the research, the number of small and medium and large corals on the Great Barrier Reef has declined by more than 50% since the 1990s. And the decline occurred in both shallow and deep water and across virtually all species, but especially in branching and table shepherd coral. So these are some of the types of coral reefs. So in branching and table shepherd corals, the decline is much greater. And this is triggered basically and mostly by the temperature rise of the earth and also by the ocean sea water. So this is a UPSC, this time prelims in 2020, there is a question regarding the how the temperature of the ocean surface is mentioned. So this is in now in focus for uh, UPSC. So APSC might also focus on these topics that what accelerates the damage or decline of the coral reef, the answer will be the rise of the temperature of the ocean. So since the reefs are underwater ecosystems and they are several interdependent species. So it is not just that the coral reefs are declining, but the other species which are dependent on the coral reefs will be lost their habitat and thus it will diminish the fish abundance and the productivity of the coral reef fisheries. So whole ecosystem will be devastated. The next article is regarding the NRL and Gale sign pipeline right to use uh, right to use sharing pact. So that is called R O U right to use. So this we are studying under the general studies on Assam paper economic development. So a pipeline right to use sharing agreement was inked between the NRL and Gale and under the agreement, both the companies shall share a common ROU that is right to use for laying their respective pipelines for a stretch of 550 kilometers from Purnia in Bihar to Guwahati in Assam. So these locations are important from Purnia in Bihar to Guwahati in Assam. And the Gale is laying its Barauni Guwahati pipeline, which is part of the Jagdishpur Haldia and Bokaro Dhamra natural gas pipeline project which is popularly known as the Pradhan Mantri Urza Ganga scheme and it is extended up to the Guwahati to supply the natural gas pipelines under the Northeast gas grid. So this we have covered in our last current affairs class that this Pradhan Mantri under the Pradhan Mantri Urza Ganga scheme, whole Northeast and Assam and Guwahati city will get the supply of natural gas line, natural gases in the pipelines. Also, this we have discussed that NRL is also laying its 1,630 kilometer long Paradip Numaligar crude pipeline and which will originate from Paradip port in Urissa and it will traverse through Urissa, West Bengal, Jharkhand, Bihar and Assam and terminating at its uh, refinery in Numaligar. So it will reach the Numaligar refinery and the pipeline project is part of the mega integrated refinery expansion project from three MMTPA, that is met, million metric ton per annum, three MMTPA to nine MMTPA currently under implementation at a project cost of more than rupees 20,000 crore. So the sharing of the pipeline right to use will help in optimization of land acquisition for pipeline laying. Both the companies will also be benefited in terms of resource sharing during the execution and operation of the respective pipelines. 
the la the next article is the india to gift submarine to myanmar so many any linked bilateral projects are on the card so india is very uh, positively beginning its bilateral relations with myanmar since india is trying to focus on the neighborhood countries uh, in south asia so this topic we are studying under the general studies two paper international relations so india has confirmed that it is gifting a submarine to myanmar the country's first as part of its sagar initiative so this apsc may ask regarding which country has uh, like uh, been gifted a submarine recently and the answer will be myanmar because since it is in news and indo myanmar relationships have again uh, moved in positive direction in recent times so these articles are very important so the ministry of external affairs spokesperson anurag sevastava has said that india will be delivering kilo class submarine ins sindhuvir to the myanmar navy which will be its first submarine so this is in accordance with the vision of sagar which is for the security and growth so this article again discusses regarding the construction of border huts between the chin state in myanmar and the mizoram state of india so these are again very important the next important article is regarding the uh, costume designer bhanu athaiya is no more now and this is very very important a question from this topic will surely come in the upcoming prelims examination because customer uh, customer designer costume designer bhanu athaiya uh, was the india's first oscar winner so it is very important and she was 91 at her death the, during her um, so she was 91 when she passed away and athaiya won the oscar for her film gandhi so this 1983 film gandhi was uh, directed by richard attenborough so this might be also be a question the who directed the oscar winning movie 1983 film gandhi and the director was richard attenborough kindly you can mention in the comment section who played the role of the gandhi in the film gandhi of 1983 so that also is very important so you can mention in the comment section who played the role of the gandhi so here we are also covering the government of assam schemes so this scheme is under the poribohan vibhag so this is under the uh, so this is under the department of transport transport department mukhyamantri gramya poribohan asani so gramya anchalor khusol jatayat aru sabalambonor ek notun dikh ditiyo porjay so the schemes and the various uh, salient features of the scheme should be always studied and here we are also covering the apne desh ko jano initiative so here we know who is known as the missile man of india this might be a question in apsc also that dr apj abdul kalam is known as the missile man of india and uh this is important and then the largest fresh water lake so india's northeastern state of manipur has the country's largest fresh water lake and it is the loktak lake so this is another important point for apsc prelims and it is situated in the moirang city so this is again important in the moirang city and the loktak lake is known to be one of one and only lake of its kind in the entire globe so now students we are beginning with the important editorials so the first editorial is regarding the recent elections for the members of the united nations human rights council so this we are topic this topic we are discussing under the general studies two paper international relations so there has been many members which are selected in the united nations human rights council after the elections which were held in the united nations general assembly and the members which have been like there is a uh, controversy or there is a like criticism for the elections of members like russia china and pakistan uh, apart from other 12 other countries so as it is known widely that china 
Russia and Pakistan have been known for violating human rights. And when these countries are selected for the Human Rights Council members, then the very validity of the concept of the uh, body of the UN body is under the question. So this article discusses that only. So then coming to the next editorial, NEP 2020 and language policy. In this article, the three language formula is again discussed at very uh, great length. So here the author uh, author points the view that India is one of the largest multilingual nations in the world and the Indian education system is multilingual in its character in every sense of the word. The language issue in India has been one of the most sensitive and debated and there are multiple problems in the implementation of language policy in Indian education system. And the major controversy regarding the language policy in India relates to the medium of instruction and the languages the students have to learn in schools. So here the author argues that with, that with the new education policy 2020 being approved by the union cabinet on July 29, 2020, there is a growing debate on how this will affect the language policy and the medium of instruction in different regions. So as per the NEP, the document says wherever possible, the medium of instruction until at least grade five and preferably till eight will be the home language that is the mother tongue or local language. Now this policy provides greater flexibility which allows states and institutions to decide on the implementation according to the needs of the children in that region. And this would be a major shift away from the use of English or Hindi as a medium of instruction. Now, Article 350 of the Constitution states that every state and local authority should endeavor to provide adequate facilities for instruction in the mother tongue at the primary stage of education. So, a state and local authority should provide the adequate facilities for instruction in the mother tongue at the primary stage of education to children belonging to linguistic minority of groups. And report of the Kothari Commission on Education and National Development 1964 to 66 suggested that in tribal areas, for the first two years of school, the medium of instruction and books should be in the local tribal language. And the regional language should be taught separately and should become the medium of instruction by the third year. So why this happens and why it was recommended because in many countries, in many states like in Assam also, there are many tribal uh, communities. So apart from learning the, uh, the uh, apart from the medium of instruction, the local tribal language should also be taught to the students of that language so that they can be better developed in the mother tongue of that uh, community, the students of that community. The Right to Education Act 2009 also said that as far as possible, the medium of instruction should be the child's mother tongue. And however, considering the diversity of languages and dialects in India, opting for mother tongue as a medium of instruction may not be as simple as it sounds because as it is known by the census report, census report that 270 mother tongues, there are uh, several languages and there are 270 languages mother tongue. So in a classroom, there may be several children who have different mother tongues. So it may not be possible to teach in each and every mother tongue. So here the challenges lies. So this is what this editorial discusses. Again, this editorial says that under the circumstances, it not be possible for the state government to compel the existing, yes, the English medium private schools which prefer English medium, the state government may not be in a position to compel them to refer to teach the students in the mother tongues or the regional languages. Now the NEP 2020 shall continue with the three language formula which was first introduced to the country in 1968 and with a major change. So the three language formula is a policy that was formulated by the Union Ministry, Union Education Ministry in the 1968 National Policy Resolution. But in that three language formula, Hindi was mandatory in both Hindi speaking and non-Hindi speaking. But in the new education policy, the new, the latest uh, new uh, national education policy does not explicitly mention 
that that third language should be hindi so this means that in assam apart from assamese and english students must learn any one of the indian languages and the policy also calls for a greater effort in investing in the large number of language teachers in all regional languages around the country so in assam also a high level committee has been constituted we have covered that and for the recommendations on the implementation of the nep in the state so with this we come to end to today's kind of first class i hope this class was very helpful thank you thank you for watching the video